All right, so in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how we can connect to a database, specifically a SQL database. We're gonna be using MySQL, and we're gonna be using the Prisma client or the Prisma ORM to do that. So Prisma is actually a very popular tool that many Next.js developers tend to yield for. And the reason why is because it's actually very easy to set up. It's type safe if you're using TypeScript, of course, and they have lots of great tools that come out of the box to help you develop your application. Nice thing about Prisma is that it's uh, declarative and you can define your data models and then uh, perform migrations to the actual database. So that way you can have uh, your data correlating with the actual uh, database itself. Okay, and it makes it very easy to reference and query your database. And I'll show you how we can do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install Prisma. Okay, so what we're going to do is let me first go into my terminal. And because we already have a Next.js project already, um, I'm just only using this guide as a reference, but don't worry. The only thing that we're going to install is Prisma. Okay, so yarn add hyphen D for dev dependency Prisma. Okay, so we're going to install Prisma. And we're going to install one more dependency called Prisma or at Prisma client. Okay, and we're going to use this later, but this is the actual package that's going to give us the Prisma client class that we can create an instance of. And then we're going to use that instance to query our database using the uh, models that we create. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to initialize Prisma. So if you use NPM, you can just use NPX. Um, I, I use Yarn, but I don't, I don't really think it matters though. But you can use Yarn or NPX. It, doesn't, it shouldn't really matter. But I'm just going to use Yarn, Prisma, init. And what this does is it's just going to run the, uh, the Prisma uh, binary that is installed inside this .bin folder. So this is inside the node modules folder. So it's actually installed locally into our project. And you can see we have this Prisma command. Okay, and if you want to run uh, binaries that are installed locally, you can just use NPX or you can just use Yarn. Or you can also use NPM too, but NPX or Yarn are typically the, the, the two common ones. All right, so now that we ran Yarn Prisma init, you're going to see that we have a bunch of steps that it tells us that we need to do. Okay, so before we look at the steps, let's just take a look at what happened. So what happened was it created a couple of files. It created a .env file, and this is where we can store the database URL. Okay, you can change the name of this environment variable, but you just need to make sure that you go inside this schema.prisma file, which was also created by uh, running that init command. And you just need to change the environment variable name here. Okay, but let's talk about this Prisma folder real quick. So inside this schema.prisma file, this is where we can configure our uh, Prisma schema file. There's three main things that happen in this file. One, it defines the generator, which is going to be used to actually generate uh, a new client every single time we make changes to our schema. And what that typically means is if we, let's say, for example, if we were to change a column or change, you know, some kind of data type, in uh, for a column in our database, or we were to create a new a table in our database schema, we would need to uh, generate a new client in order to get the reflected, uh, in order to get the reflected uh, models. So that way we can actually reference the models and then interact with the new updated database tables. Okay, and that's the nice thing about uh, Prisma is that the Prisma client generates models okay and allows you to interact with that client that's tailored to your application's data models and you'll see in a second what i mean by that so what we're going to do is uh we're going to go inside this data source block over here okay and another thing that this file takes care of is configuring your data source for our provider we're not using postgres we're using mysql but you can use postgres okay so we're going to go ahead and select mysql and we'll leave the environment variable loan database URL. Now we will we will go inside this .env file, and you're going to need to change this to match your database credentials. So since I'm using MySQL, I'm going to go ahead and change this from Postgres to uh, MySQL. And this field over here before the colon is the username of your database account. 
So for mine, it's test user. And the password is test user123. And then at, and then that's just the domain or the, the host. So we're running our server on localhost. And then the port. So instead of 5432, which is the default port for Postgres, in case you didn't know, we're just going to put 3306, which is the default port for my SQL. And then this part over here is the name of the database. Um, I'm going to change that to uh, Next.js Prisma. Okay. And I'm going to just delete this part. Now, I'm going to have to go into my database and actually create this database because it doesn't exist right now. And I'll show you how we can do that. So now let's actually go ahead and save. Let's close this out. And the next thing that we have to do is we need to actually, um, we need to actually first create the database and then we need to have our data models map to the actual database tables. Okay. Now there's two ways that you can actually do that, right? Because if you've used other ORMs such as Mongoose or SQLize, what you're used to is you're used to creating models or entities. And then when you run your application, those ORMs will generate the database tables based off of your entities or your models. Okay. In Prisma, you can do this uh, both ways. You can either uh, write your data models. You can manually create your data models and then you can perform a migration. And what will happen is it will generate the database schema for you, or you can manually create your database tables and then introspect is the concept that that's, that's what's called. It's called introspecting. You can introspect the database using the Prisma CLI. And what that will do is it'll read your, the database schema and it will, uh, create new models or update your existing models that reflect the latest version of your database schema. So you can do it both ways. I'm going to show you how we can do it using the migrations because I feel like it's a lot, it's a lot more better to do it that way. Okay. But you can do it either way. And I'll show you how to do that in another series because I don't want to get to, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to like introduce, you know, too much with Prisma. Okay. But I figured I need to mention these important things in order for people to understand how this stuff works. Because I want to introduce to you all uh, Prisma without really explaining how it actually works. Okay. But that's just the basic concept of it. So let's go ahead. And before we do anything else, um, let's just go ahead and do this. I want to show you what happens if we actually run these commands. So if I run yarn Prisma DB pull, which is the command to introspect the database. Remember, introspect is where you take the database and you're pulling the latest information. You're pulling all of the updated values, not values, sorry, updated column names, table names, uh, anything that's new, you're going to pull that down and you're going to generate uh, the updated models based off of the latest version of the database. And then you can actually interact with the database tables in the code when you introspect. So if I run this command, you're going to see that it's going to say the database does not exist. So let me go ahead and log into my database. So I'll open up a new tab and I'll just type MySQL hyphen U test user hyphen P type in my password. And then I'm going to go ahead and type create database. And the name of our database was called, I think next.js underscore Prisma. Okay. And I'm just going to type use next.js Prisma. So that way I can actually uh, start selecting tables from this database. But if I do show tables right now, you're going to see that it's empty and that's okay. But let me go ahead and run this introspect command again. You're going to see that we're going to get a different error. Okay. So now it's saying that it cannot, uh, Prisma DB pool cannot create any models, uh, in your schema.prisma file. Okay. And the reason why it can't is because we don't have any tables in our database. Okay. So if we were to manually create a table in our database right now, and if we ran the command again, it would generate a model for us inside this file. Okay. But we don't want to do that. Well, I'll show you both ways, but don't worry. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a model ourselves, and then we'll go ahead and create a migration. Now, if I actually try to run this command, okay. Um, you're going to see that we get an error and it says you don't have any models to find, so nothing will be generated. And it also gives you a friendly tip on how to create a model. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and create a model. 
So we do that by just using the keyword model, and then we can go ahead and call our model whatever we want. So since we have a route for users, let's go ahead and create a user model to represent users in our application. And for every single uh, record, or not record, for every single model, we wanna make sure we have a primary key. So I'm gonna call the primary key ID. You can call it whatever you want, but the first part is always gonna be the name of the field. So I'm gonna call it ID. The second column, so ID and then space, is gonna be the data type. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and specify this to be, not DB, an ID. And I can set a default value. And we have to pass in a value for this. And we can just do auto increment like that. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Oh, and I'm sorry, I used the wrong data type. They mean to do string, I meant to do integer. Okay, which is what our primary key is going to be. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a couple other fields. Let's do email. So this one will be a string. And we can then set the specific type to be a, uh, well, let's do a varchar and then size of 255. And we can also set a default value too if we want to. But I'm not going to do that. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and create a couple more fields. So let's just do a password, string, db, bar chart, 255. And then we'll do first name, string. This will also be a bar chart, 255. And you can also map property names to columns as well. So what will happen is uh, this will create a column called first underscore name. So if you want to do snake case in the actual SQL table and have camel case in your actual JavaScript type of code, you can definitely do that. All right, so now that we've created the model, let's go ahead and create a SQL or a Prisma migration. So to do that, we run yarn Prisma migrate and it's going to prompt us, or oh, we have to do migrate dev because we're in dev mode right now. So we're going to go ahead and give it a name. So we'll call it create user model. Call it whatever you want, doesn't matter. And now you're going to see that we create the migration. And what happens next is it generates the client. Okay. Now let's go ahead and see what happens. So let's go into the SQL table or the SQL database and let's use the show table statement. You're going to see that we now have this user table okay you don't have to worry about the migrations part but we do have the user table over here if i do describe user you're going to see that all of our column names okay all of our column types okay everything is reflected from the model okay now how do we actually interact with the database let's go ahead and do that so i'm going to go ahead and inside this users index.ts file okay so inside our users route, I'm going to go ahead and import Prisma client from Prisma client. So we installed this package earlier in case you forgot. If you haven't installed this yet, make sure you install at Prisma slash client. And what we're going to do is we can create a client instance. So I can do const Prisma equals new Prisma client. And then what I can do is I want to go ahead and fetch all the users from the database. So instead of calling res.send and passing in a hard-coded string, let's go ahead and fetch all the users. So let's do const users equals await because the method that we're going to call is going to return a promise. We have to await it. So Prisma. And notice how... Uh, what's going on here? Uh, oh, wait. Did I accidentally... Oh, I accidentally imported Prisma. No wonder why. Okay, there we go. Do I not have types? Oh, I named this Primza. Sorry. Okay, so Prisma. And see how over here we have this user property? The reason why we have this is because we created the model. Okay. And then we generated it. We generated a new client after the migration was performed. Okay. So when we generate the new client, it's going to go ahead and create 
these properties based off of our models. So we can now uh, call methods such as create, create many, delete, uh, find, literally whatever it is that we need for our application. So it's like CRUD-like functionalities. So let's go ahead and do find many. Okay, so let me go ahead and do const users and await this. And let's return res.send users. And you're going to see that when I make a request, a get request, it's going to return an empty array because we don't have any users yet. Okay, so that's going to be pretty much it for connecting to the database. I know it was a little bit of a long video, but I just want to show you how we can connect to Prisma. And hopefully you all understand how Prisma actually works. In the next video, I'll show you how we can populate our database by setting up a post request where we will add data to the database. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.